to our 3am our alarm goes off and we head for home i want to get sailing now second to last penultimate sail on ruby rose i'm gonna be really sad i'm gonna be absolutely gutted to leave this boat hell's teeth Oof. This morning we are meant to be, if we had taken plan A, anchored off Swanage. We made a decision to just come back to St Helier. Oh. Mixed emotions, I really wanted to get going today. <laughs> we want our last sail in this boat to be a nice one, you know? It's a difficult one, it is. Morning. But you're glad you didn't leave now, aren't you? Do you need anything from, from out the shops? Okay, yesterday we were meant to leave. A couple of things happened. Firstly, I ended up in the bloody hospital, of all things. Nothing, nothing to worry about. I just, um, I think I have a, a gastric ulcer. Got a couple of weeks of antibiotics, lay off the booze and the cheese for a bit, and should be tickety-boo. So we didn't leave. I felt awful when we actually went out to, um, to try and get round to the anchorage. I, I felt... I felt sick before we actually got off the pontoon and it's not like nerves or anything else. It's literally, I was just like, uh, something is wrong with me. Anyways, trip to the hospital, some IV fluids, some IV meds, some uh, blood tests and everything else. All good. And, <laughs> you know, universal healthcare and all that, zero cost. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. So today we're in St. Helier in Jersey, which is a lot, has a lot less of this storm hitting it than where we should have been 80 miles north. And honestly, I am pretty damn pleased that we didn't set off, but it's savage out there. We are stuck here until the weather ameliorates. That's that expression? Better to, better to be in a marina and wishing you were at sea than to be at sea wishing you were in a marina. Live by that and you won't go far wrong. Anyway, time to hunker down with tea and buns. So we have been waiting for a weather window for three weeks now. I mean, if one week was in quarantine, second week to explore Jersey, and then third week because a couple of low pressure systems rolled in. And there were three boats on our pontoon. Um, two of us are still here. The other sailing boat left two days ago because they had to get back. But they messaged us because we all talk on the pontoons and said that they were towed in by a lifeboat. And they were towed in by the lifeboat because um, their fuel systems were all clogged up and they checked their filters before they set off and they were clean. So I dipped the tank and yes, the fuel appears to be polluted and we filled up from the same place. So the first thing to do is to dose the tank with uh, a biocide. The pollution in the tank, for those of you who don't know, is something called diesel bug. It is uh, an anaerobic bacteria that forms this kind of black sticky slime and that black, black sticky slime just clogs up all your filters and your engine dies. And so what you need to do is put uh, an, a diesel bug additive into a, into a fuel tank. Now there are two types of additive. Um, one is um, it just kills the diesel bug and the other is a dispersant. And what that does is it then takes this black sticky slime and kind of like turns it into non-black sticky slime. So it will pass harmlessly through your filters and get burnt up by the engine. So um, this morning's job is changing the filters, dosing the tank. A little bit of overkill there? Probably. Um, the, the dose for this is actually very, very small. Engineer just said, just really dose the tank high, just put a shock dose in, which is like, so I'm gonna put about a third of a bottle into this. He said, it will not affect the fuel. It just will just work faster. He's a, a Volvo engineer, so I hope he's right. Anyway, off we go. <laughs> get the old fuel filter off and if it's clogged we'll change that one out. Clean as a whistle. No! No! Shite! Ah! Bastard! Let's put diesel down there. No, I spot I dropped the bolt down there. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. Alright, well so once we're here we'll get it all sorted out. So the way it sits is the filter sits there, mm -hmm. the bowl sits on top of there. Mm -hmm. This bolt 
goes up here mm -hmm. and then it all screws into a housing it all tightens back up yeah yeah so but you don't need to replace it because it's clean right i'm going to replace it anyway just because i can see that it's clean doesn't mean that it is clean i've literally got six filters and seeing as i've dropped all the fuel out of here i've got to bleed the system through anyway so you keep the same bowl yeah the bowl stays the same What's happening tomorrow morning at 3am? Tomorrow at 3am our alarm goes off and we head for home in probably probably one of the very last sails in this boat it's pretty pretty challenging passage plan actually 10 20 30 miles just the ordinary race so we essentially need the current to take us like up we've got to make 30 miles before we get to here and and how long do we have to do it in in, in one tide yeah yeah not easy well, possible but not easy otherwise we'll have to go around around the outside of Aldney you know some a lot of people that sail will hopefully find this interesting so the first part of our passage plan is we have to get to a certain point about 40 miles away before 12 o'clock so midday the reason is that the tidal stream around here is crazy crazy strong and it's a t it's a place um called the Alderney race it's literally all the all the all that water funneling through this yeah. pond in springs. That's ten knots. Mm. You have to work backwards. You want to be at the Ordinary Race at High Water St Helier. When we go through the Ordinary Race, as long as it is with us, as long as the tide is with us, we don't have to go through our high water. We can go through at any point where. Yes. Yeah, so basically, it's awkward though because it does start to turn, doesn't it? Which basically means. You need to leave at low water. Exactly. And take six hours to get yourself north. And the tide goes whipping up there at about eight, nine knots and will turn round and come back at five knots. So we have to go through the right way. The high water tomorrow is at 20 past six in the morning. At 20 past six tomorrow morning, we need to be about 12 miles from here. So we've got to come out of here at 3 a.m. And then we should hopefully head north um, for five to six hours and once we clear the clear the Alderney race we've then got 60 miles across the English Channel and that then starts the next the next issue now, the next issue is that there's a massive shipping lane but the timing for tomorrow is good because we all do the shipping lanes at, during daylight and I prefer doing them during daylight it's easier to see the ships once we clear the shipping lanes we've got about 40 miles to do so there's a lot of variables tomorrow the speed at which we clear the Alderney race will be um, really imperative for dictating how the rest of our day goes and where we end up anchoring. Actually, I'm quite excited about going. I want, I want to get going. I'm trying to contain my excitement so that I actually get some sleep tonight. <laughs> I want to get sailing now. I kind of, I felt bloody ill last week because I had a, as you might have mentioned, I had a stomach ulcer, so I had a... I'm, I feel I felt awful, just physically awful. And you know, I feel fine now, but I felt mentally really like kind of like washed out as well as physically washed out last week. Now I'm like I'm just I'm just I want to get sailing. Mm. I'd like nice a nice sunny day. Nice sunny day, nice gentle breeze. Yeah. Making good boat speed. That's like a unicorn day, sailing day. We want okay. So this is what we want a unicorn sailing day. Yeah. <laughs> We're here, <laughs> so there's like literally three knots of wind. I'm really, really hoping that uh, these easterlies actually are like just a tiny, tiny bit further west because I don't want to be in that wind hole. There's like literally a wind hole like on our passage. That's where we're going. I think it's fair to say that we are not going to be um, having a fast passage today and we'll probably have the engine on all day long. All right, I've got my coffee. 
I think it's time to go. My body is definitely telling me that I should be fast asleep right now. <laughs> the alarm went off and I was like fast asleep in a proper like deep, deep sleep. Oh well, at least we're off nice and early. I don't think we're going to get in before light or in before dark in in night in light. Oh God, I can barely speak. I'm so tired uh, tonight. Unfortunately, I think we'll get in in the dark. Um, but hopefully, we still get in in time, like you know, at a reasonable hour before midnight would be nice. But it's definitely not going to be a fast passage. Man, it's cold. It is, oh, 5.50 a.m. And I'm not sure if it's psychological or not, but just before dawn is when it's, it's coldest. We've got about eight knots of wind over the deck. Air temperature is 14 degrees Celsius, but with the wind chill, it's lower. And uh, yeah, we're just getting our timings right to hit this waypoint, hopefully at 6.20 at the moment. We're gonna hopefully be there at 6.00. 17 so three minutes shy but looking forward to seeing the sunrise should inject some warmth into me Therese has gone to bed we always try and run a watch system just so that one's one person gets to rest it just makes life a lot easier for us so one person is refreshed and warm and out of the wind and I'll let her sleep as long as she needs to if I need her I can get her up I'm tethered on got my life jacket on so you know, I know that I'm in the cockpit, but it just gives her a lot of reassurance knowing that I will not untether. So she'll find me exactly where she leaves me when she comes back. Well, the sun's up. Still not any warmer, but it only takes two or three hours to warm up and I am freezing. I found one glove and a racing glove. That's all the clothes I can put on now. Anyway, we picked up about a knot of tide and then we got there just, and then we got to the right place just as the tide turned. So that's pretty good. There's a couple of fishing boats on the horizon I need to keep an eye out for. Well, half past eight. Um, we haven't picked up as much tide as I thought we would. Teresa's still asleep. Good on her. So. So as you just heard, there has been a May Day um, over the radio. Fortunately, a boat, like a five metre boat has capsized just south of Jersey. And I can't work out whether they, they originally said that they couldn't find anyone. Then I, then I think they said that they did find someone, but I don't know, now they're giving out search and rescue coordinates and it seems to be like a bit of a wide area. So I don't know if they can find anyone anyway. I hope that, well, whoever was on board is okay. Obviously something happened, but I don't think the conditions would have been to blame. That's for sure. I got a few hours sleep, which is really nice. Uh, so I'm feeling a little bit more human now. Always a good feeling. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Nick's just gone down below to I think just have a little rest. I don't know whether he's sleeping, but he's just lying down. It's gonna be a really long day, and we've found that on long passages, it's good to like have breaks and go downstairs. And yeah, we're a couple of hours away from the ordinary race now, so we'll be going through in just over nine miles. Conditions are obviously lovely um, for going through the ordinary race. It's uh, flat calm, barely a breath of wind, and uh, we're at Neeps as well, so we don't have much tide to deal with. Although, to be honest, I wouldn't have minded a little bit more tide on the way up. We haven't made particularly 
you know, good time. Hoping for a very uneventful day today. Our charts, our digital charts are wrong. The tide was not meant to turn till 1 p.m. It's 11 a.m. Right, well, if you can hear the engine in the background, like, really, really loud, it's because we've had to, like, massively up the revs. I think we're doing about 2,400 revs at the moment. Yeah, it would appear that we're a little late getting to the ordinary race. We're punching tight at the moment and we're still about five miles away. Well, the almanac kind of says that this is going to happen now. Five hours after high water St. Helia, we get foul tide here. It's really upset. <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're definitely punching probably about a knot of tide at the moment. That's only got to get stronger, unfortunately. And we're motoring into a little bit of wind as well. I mean, there's not much wind, but what little there is, we're, we're going into it, so. Yeah, and our hull's probably pretty dirty from sitting in the marina for three weeks. So none of that is ideal, but all I will say is that we literally could not have left a minute earlier. We left as soon as the seal light came down. So not much we could have done. We just didn't have any wind, so we couldn't really make particularly good speed. All I would say is that it's neeps and we didn't have much tide coming with us. So yeah, we're a bit bummed. But once we're through, we just need to make another five miles. <laughs> and once we're through, we're in the English Channel and then like the tides, the tides are strong, but they're, they're east and west and we're going north. So it doesn't really make any difference to us. We're feeling quite smug for a while there, thinking what a lovely day it is. It's so pissed off. Only 3.8 miles there into the sort of um, waypoint bay. So we'll be through hopefully less than an hour. Unless the tide picks up quickly and then we'll just end up. I just. Uh. Yeah, not ideal. Uh, we are just passing the light, but we have a transit with the lighthouse at. Uh, 090 degrees and we're not familiar with the tidal streams. Can we go around the north of the island to get to the to get to Bray in this tidal state? Our intention was trying to get to pool this evening but the tide didn't make today and we've just got caught in the race. So um, if we can't punch through I was just asking you for some alternatives either to anchor to wait for the turn of the tide or to anchor in Bray and I'm gonna ask if we do anchor in Bray will the Will the tide carry us around the north of the island? Over. Oh, yes, if you are able to make it to the, uh, to the, to the northeast corner of the island by the lighthouse, the tide is ebbing, so from that point it should carry you uh, around to Bray Harbour. Uh, failing that, you are not able to progress further than the, uh, the north coast of Albany. Uh, suggest you turn 180 and head to Longy Bay, that's by Van Island, Longy Bay to the south of the island. Over. Uh, but we would prefer to try to make for Bray Harbour. Thanks very much, Alderney Port Control. We will try and make for Bray and I'll, we will be on standby on 7-4 to receive any instruction. River Rose listening and thank you. Oh. A couple of things. Firstly, because they, don't, they have local knowledge. He said that once you get abreast of the lighthouse, the tide will split and it should take us that way. Now basically the tide can't, it has to go round the island. So it really depends now how far we're being swept. What do we do? Now, looking at the GPS, we're on a course heading, which means that the boat is compensating for tide. And the speed I think is creeping up slightly. So I'm kind of hoping that at some point we can kind of, uh, well. Get out of this tidal stream. Yeah. Well, that is Alderney. Alderney is behind us. Just. just, just behind us. So we made it. We're just about through now. That was really frustrating. Nick's busily trimming all the sails because we're trying to get as much speed out of Ruby Rose as possible. We got about 10 knots at 60 degrees, I think. And we are punching tide um, still, but we're nonetheless able to make kind of between four and a half about 4.7, 4 4.8 knots, which is tipped over to 5.4. So yeah, making much better progress now. I'll just make sure everything's so down below. I did do this last night, but I better double check since we are on a bit of a lean. There you go, 5.6 knots. What's the 18 hour? Half past four. Our ETA is half past four in the morning. <laughs> 
hopefully that improves. In the bathroom, that's usually all we can see. No, that's good. And I guess we're settling in for 14 hours of uh, English Channel sailing. And you know what, the breeze at the moment is not gonna last, so we're gonna enjoy it while we can and try and make as much progress as we can. It's actually not an uncomfortable motion. Yeah, well, it's all right when it's flat, when the seas are flat. Our speed is starting to pick up nicely. Now doing six and a half knots, which is lovely. Now arrival time, I can see it's like before our arrival time was kind of starting to be pushed out and that felt really bad and now it's uh, it's coming down where we're gonna arrive a little bit earlier and that's what we like to see. So we've just left the eastbound shipping lane. We're in the TSS at the moment and we're about to enter the westbound shipping lane. That's just our like AAS transponder. For some reason it's not communicating with the receiver and it's saying that we're about to collide with ourselves. <laughs> they're not they're not working together at the moment as they should, I don't know why. Fairly quiet in the water today. Um, I don't see any other sailing boats. I haven't seen any other sailing boats all day apart from just a couple around the ordinary race. There's obviously some, you know, some traffic. There's some shipping, some ships, some cargo ships and whatnot. But, uh, you know, it's not too crazy. And it's good that we've you know, we're here in daylight. That was one of our, I guess, requirements to making this crossing. That was, we really wanted to do the Aldney race in daylight and that whole passage actually between Jersey and the Aldney race, because there's lobster pots and you can't see them at night as we proved last night when we got up. Yeah, we wanted to do that part of the passage in daylight. And we wanted to do the shipping lanes in daylight and we've, we've achieved both of that. So that's really good. I think we'll arrive at the moment. Our arrival time is 11 o'clock tonight and that is at the anchorage. We don't think we're gonna make it into the marina. <sighs> but other than that, it just feels like a fresh, quite cold, but bright and pleasant autumn day. So I'm happy. Nice second to last penultimate sail on Ruby Rose. We think, <laughs> we hope, <laughs> that's the plan. Yeah, we're now at 0.5, so that's, that's widening. It's been a big old day, my darling. I know. It's not over yet. I know. 7.2 knots. 7.2 knots. We've only got uh, 23 miles to go, and we can see land. Yeah, bittersweet. Yeah. We have gone halfway around the world in this boat. Yeah. And do you know what? It's more than that, without waxing overly lyrical. I think when we bought this, it was literally the distillations of all our hopes, dreams, and expectations for the next five years. That's what it is. And she has lived up to all our hopes and dreams. We've done some mad stuff in this boat. I'm gonna be really sad. I'm gonna be absolutely gutted to leave this boat. Yeah, to be honest, I'm dealing with it by not thinking about it. I, just this, it, it doesn't feel real that this is our penultimate sail on, on Ruby Rose. And to tell you the truth, Therese, if you told me six years ago that we would still be living on this boat six, after six years, I'd be like, really? I would have believed that. I don't know, babe. I, I think when we did all this, I kind of thought, well, we'll see how we go for a year or two. Yeah, I was a bit more... A bit more stoic, eh? A bit more ambitious, I think. I wanted to go into the Pacific on this boat, but when push came to shove, we realised it wasn't the right boat for that. Tortellini is the perfect passage meal. Literally just chuck it in, boil it for five minutes, pop. A spoonful of pesto on, some parmesan, and you've got a hot meal. It's out, babe. That behind me is the moon. I know you can barely see me, but I'm sure that you can see the moon. How spectacular. Just coming into the anchorage now. We've managed 107 miles, which is a long day, and it's almost 10 o'clock, and we're gonna get into this anchorage just in time to go to bed. So we will see you tomorrow morning 
and uh, that should be our final sale on Ruby Rose. So we'll see you then.